let's get on with Mystery versus Odyssey. All right, we're doing this? We're doing this? Not a button check? Nah, looks like we're getting into it for Smashville being the start right, of the set. Go. Now, Adi actually dropped Palutena, and he is definitely going. He's sticking with the Greninja and the Fox. My god, already starting super explosively. All right, so as far as matchups are concerned, this is a pretty interesting one. Greninja has the mobility to stay around uh, where he can strike with Lucina, while also having the speed to just navigate just outside of that safely and threaten with a lot of uh, pressure, whether it's Water Shuriken or Forward Air. Yeah, no, um, I have actually have spoken to some Greninja mains, or some, rather some Lucina mains, and they have said that he definitely does a good job against her because of that exact specific reason. As we see Odyssey at 99% already in danger, almost dying. Yeah, it's worth noting that he has been playing like on fire as of the past couple of weeks, and I know he's been like particularly looking at winning to, uh, this month's Xeno you know, Saga. So I'm expecting that kind of fire to come out in his play. At the very least, it's evident at the beginning of the set. Yeah, no, he's doing a great job. His uh, his main uh, tool is just t making you take so much damage at the ledge, as we see just now. Odyssey has to recover, has to mix up his recoveries constantly, or else he will lose that stock. Lucina's a very simplistic character in that people complain that she's boring, she's bland, but like when your whole game plan is just go to the ledge, either get a gimp or just straight up kill at the ledge. Well, that's what you need to do. But when he is already grinding people up to the high 160 percentages, you don't even need to be at the ledge when you're eating those sweet, sweet back airs. Yeah, no. And, and here's the thing. Neutral with these two characters is is always a very, very patient game. Because like I said, Lucina, you know, you, you said that Greninja has the mobility to avoid her, which he definitely does. And Lucina has the strength to just do so much damage on Greninja, who's not necessarily, you know, one of the heaviest characters. So right now at 72%, he needs to be careful about how he can take a forward smash to the face. A lot of this is also gonna be micro spacing, and you see that now that Adi has like a chance to stand on the ground. He's able to wall out E super well. You're seeing, like, this whole interaction has just been Adi in control. But with E navigating around that space as well, like, it's keeping it fairly even, despite how strong of a start this was for, for Mr. E. Yeah, no, and, and that's a... And keep in mind, when Mr. E, he likes to actually, like, jump and wait wait for a reaction from his opponent and then throw out a back air or maybe a fair. And that's what Odyssey has to watch out for as he tries to land, getting up there, and this is where he needs to be careful. Because if he gets that, oh, well, there you go. <laughs> that's how it be. Especially on Smashville. That's how it be. <laughs> like, sword characters can control his stage really well because so much of it is, like, it's not even just the fact of center stage being particularly small. It's, you know they're able to shark the platform with their aerials really well. And then from there, there's not that much space from the end of the platform to the ledge. So when your whole game plan is just pushing out from center stage to the ledge, and the stage is built around that so well for a character like Lucina, it's a bit of a struggle for Adi. Mm-hmm, but beautiful parry. And he's actually, like I said, he actually has gotten down the timing of Mr. E's attacks. You know, wait for the little reaction from Odyssey. And he's actually just going to block it, parry it, rather, and then get that up smash kill. And now we have an even game. One stock to one stock. Six, seven percent, thirty. But, you know, that's these two characters are combo machines. They can easily just rack it up. Hydro pump. Hydro pump. Pretty interesting option, I feel like. Adi's not going to have a lot of time to do maneuvers like that. Like, getting his uh, the check into whatever he can follow up, be it dash attack or down tilt to set something up. Maybe pop up with up tilt, pretty interesting as well. I feel like Adi hasn't been really focusing a lot of the juggle situation whenever he's in control. It's been a lot of the edge guards, which, mind you, Greninja is not bad at all with, but he seems to be getting a lot more bang for his buck whenever he's in control of the ledge. And that's, and maybe, you know, maybe that's his game plan. Like, right now, E is in a, such a perilous situation. Beautiful tech immediately upbringing. That's actually respect. Like he he knew that he knew that Mr. E wasn't just wasn't, wasn't just gonna sit there. So he was like, alright, just let me up air and immediately just follow up with that one. Tension closing in for game one. Forwarder not gonna be able to do it, and the forward throw from Greninja not killing just yet. Ooh. Oh, water. Yeah, don't even need the Wait, water. Wait, he, he wasted his up B? Yeah, he used his up B. I thought he, fo I thought he forward aired, and then... Hold on, we got a replay. We yeah, wait for it. He comes in for the forward air. Thank you, And for then replays. up B's right away. His timing ooh, is just ooh. so bad on oh. it, though. He, 
Yeah, I thought he. I thought that was a forward air. I was like, oh, we saved jumps, kids. Yeah, no, he was good as gone as soon as that happened. But let's see what happens in game two. Yeah, no, I mean, that was just an unfortunate situation. But Mr. E honestly felt uh, it looked like he had control for most of the match. You know, uh, it was just one of those uh, blunders that cost you. It, Cost, cost you the match. With such high-level players like Odyssey and Mr. E, you can't really afford missed inputs. You can't afford small mistakes like that because these players are the type to capitalize on it 100%. And on top of that, all these players are super hungry. You know, like, you're looking at a player like Mr. E's caliber. You don't care how good he is. You don't care how well he's piloting his Lucina or that he's been playing better than ever as of late. You're still going to smack him around. You're still going to keep him at the ledge forever. So what Adi's planning to do is he tries to take the reins on this game too, but quick reversal from E, almost spelling disaster, but we're once again going right back to the ledge. Yeah, and this is the thing. He, he is so great at keeping you here, but the thing is he has to close, right? If you don't close, you don't get the stock, and then Odyssey's just going to rack up damage, and Greninja doesn't really struggle to kill in this game. He has, he has a lot of options here. And that's where that's where Odyssey, you know, tends to capitalize on. Mr. E needs to take the stop right away. Down there almost trading with up air in the weirdest of ways, but using Beautiful Dolphin Slash, pick him up off the ground just like that. E gonna take a little bit of momentum here. Although it's worth noting, as far as like the game is concerned, it's a little bit closer than we saw in game one. Adi doing a fine job of being able to work off the back heel, but I don't know if that's going to be too much of a concern for uh, for Adi. He's still chilling being the game up, so he's got plenty of time to figure out how he's going to adapt and then just in general control the stage. Yeah, but you know, you still don't want to lose this game when you're... You still don't want to lose game two when you're up because that, to some players, that could be a huge blow to their morale. You know, and Adi's a... Adi's a momentum-based player. Like when he when he's he's so explosive that when he's like, you know, I got this, I got this, he got he has this, you know? And the thing is that when Mr. E in the lead is like one of the worst players that you want to be in the lead, or rather one of the best ones, as he will do his best to keep you there. And playing a character like Lucina, who can just keep you away with uh, in, in so many situations is such a problem. Odyssey needs to find a way to close this gap right now. I like how Adi is trying to maneuver around the lead platform while trying to find his in on E. Try and take advantage of the fact that Greninja can move so swiftly, you have that much more space to try and get around there. Unfortunately, Odyssey, notice, Mr. E actually didn't even move. He was like, he's gonna roll, he's gonna roll in front of like, me. Like, why, why would he roll? <laughs> and, and that's the crazy thing, like, that's how you know E is like on a different plane right now, it's a beautiful Dolphin Smash, catches it, all right? I feel like at this stage? point, it's, oh, yeah, no, that's not bad. Greninja's recovery is always really good. Yeah, he has so many ways to mix it up. And Adi's doing such a great job, but Mr. E is just playing this pressure game so, so well. I wonder if E just remembered that he has Shield Breaker. We're seeing it for the first time in the set I think so. a little bit ago. <laughs> He's like, oh, wait, I forgot about this. <laughs> this worked. You know, a key difference of fighting Greninja that isn't Venia is a lot of them are going to approach with Shield. Oh, yeah, true. Venia's just going to try and step just a little bit out of the way of your hitboxes, yeah. but most Greninjas are sane and want to survive, and, and they'll block when they can. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that Greninja can, you know, kind of just, like, low-profile a lot of these things. So when Mr. E does a shield poke, um, or the shield break, I guess, uh, he, kinda, he has to angle it down, or if he's doing it from the ledge, he has to wait until his sword is at the lowest point. So they can actually hit Greninja, or else he's like, just going to miss. Oh! Really weird trade over there, but Adi's still staying alive with the solid tech. He keeps on rolling out towards the ledge, and I feel like that's a habit that he has picked up on. We see it fully exploited here at the end of game two. Right on with the 1-1 one -one count. The is not written. And that's the thing about playing Mr. E. You never want to give him momentum. You never want to let him capitalize on an opportunity to win a game. Because that game three is going to be so scary. Because E is super, super, super clutch. All right, so we're going to ban Pokemon Stadium. I would like to see maybe a, a, a Battlefield for Odyssey, I would say. I, I believe, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the Battlefield I, I, Greninja does very well on. No? Greninja does uh, fare well on Battlefield, but the pick is, they pick Kalos? FD. FD? So the board says FD, Wait, but they went to Kalos. Ready. 
All right, so it's confirmed. These All guys right. just press buttons. They who's, don't actually know what they're doing. Who's, who's lying to us? The board or the guy? The board. They're <laughs> lying to us because we are going to Kalos Pokemon League for oh, Game 3. Oh, okay. All right. And this was actually the stage I was wanting to see and why I was really confused why I showed being banned. Um, Greninja has the mobility to make the most out of this, and I feel like it's a little bit more difficult for Lucina to edge guard Greninja here. Mm -hmm. Not only can Greninja use his wall jump, potentially his wall stick, uh, he has a lot of ways to maneuver around given the platform at the top too. And I feel like considering how much of these battles have been at the ledge, it's really important for Odyssey to have more options, but he needs to be alive to execute those options. That was actually a super good two frame by Mr. E. I mean, catching that and knowing that the Force Smash will actually kill too. It's one of those options that make you afraid to grab the ledge if they're right there. And that mental pressure is insane. Oh my God, Mr. E is relentless here. And he knows, he ha this is what I'm saying. He's such a momentum based player that you don't want to give him any type of leeway. Like you brought it up earlier, and it is shining through in this game three. You can even see how emotive he is in the player camera. He is all over the place right now. It's it's insane. Already he already made Odyssey lap him in percent. It's at it's one nineteen. Another forward smash is gonna take it, and he, he knows it. No, notice how he's switching his playstyle to slightly more defensive, right? He's like, you know what? You gotta come to me. I'm just gonna up you when you recover. Ooh, down smash. Not gonna take it. it doesn't reach low enough from the ledge. It's not going to give Odyssey that little breath of relief that he needs, and he really needs it now. Sitting at 152% against E in this situation is bad, dude. And even with a really weird landing from there, Wait, still going to be able to I pick really up thought E died. <laughs> I really thought Greninja up smash and E died. Wait, what? Yeah, that was just straight up a magic trick. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. We are back to neutral. Great confirm. Down tilt to uh, to up smash, you know one is one is gonna just B and B confirms right here. But Odyssey has a lot of ground to make up here. Okay, great 34 percent, and follows up with the fair. He has to be slippery if he wants to try and bring this back, and he has to do some kind of like, you know, maybe like you know some Venya esque uh, tricks here to pull that off, man. <laughs> I feel like a lot of what Adi needs to do in this situation in particular is slow down a bit of the momentum by forcing E to approach, or at least mispositioning E, because if you've noticed throughout this game three, he oh. has been staying almost entirely around that circle in the center of the stage. Controlling center stage has been super important for E, because it's allowing him to continue to force so many of these interactions into the air and off stage, with no room for Greninja to contest. Exactly, and the thing is that, oh wow, and the thing is Greninja, this stage isn't that bad for him. I mean, he has the mobility to, to, to do what he wants here. And that's the thing. But Mr. E's actually just capitalizing on everything that Odyssey does. And he ran away with the momentum. But you're right. Odyssey kind of did slow down the gameplay a little bit as you see him bring it back oh so slowly. And with Adi trying to take control of center stage himself, it gives him the, the capabilities to execute the same game plan that he has. But the problem is, is he's not able to do it consistently, and he's not getting out these kills. He's doing a fine job of surviving on his own stocks, but being as he's not able to clutch it out here, it's just becoming a harder and harder situation as they go for these trades and attacks. But with Adi in control of the situation, this might be what he needs. Yeah, man. I mean, Lucina does have up throw, but that's not going to kill him until, like, you know, maybe 170 or 5 around there. Oh, my God. The up tilt. Tilt. That's insane. All right. So here's the thing. That's actually one of, like, the Lucina's most tilting moves. No pun intended. It's, I'm trying to find her. out how, how do you DI that? It hits her. No, it's like it's so strong. Yo, I it definitely no failed that that pop quiz. Like, look, look at that. this. Look at that. Why? Straight up, you see that? Why? Yo, he actually just wanted to go to the moon. And he popped off, rightfully so, because <laughs> I'm showing this clip from that friend who plays with Look at this pop look quiz. At, Where you gotta go? It. That's a BS. Look at look at Adi's face. He's like, he's like, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Why? That's not gonna hit hits.